The ocean is massive, and so it's no surprise that there are a massive amount of reasons it is absolutely terrifying. I'm talking dangerous animals, unexplained phenomena, and also the fact that the ocean is leaking. Let's get into it. Starting off our list today, we have the absolutely crazy amount of shipwrecks that have occurred in the Gulf of Mexico. In 2018, a report released by Ocean Explorer revealed that oil and gas companies had discovered an outstanding 600 shipwrecks and possible shipwrecks in the Gulf of Mexico while surveying the area at depths of up to 2,316 meters or 9,800 feet. 33 of these ships have been visually confirmed by either divers or remotely operated vehicles as historic vessels. And although only 600 shipwrecks and possible shipwrecks have been discovered by these companies to date, it is estimated that over 4 thousand shipwrecks reside on the ocean floor of the Gulf of Mexico, sitting anywhere from the nearshore shallows all the way out to the deepest abyss of the Gulf. But that's not even the weirdest part. While attempting to explore a particular shipwreck, teams experienced submarine malfunctions, failed video monitors, sonar breaking, haywire hydraulics, and self-destructing rovers, which of course begs the question, are some of these shipwrecks possibly cursed, or maybe they contain levels of radiation? that affect these machines, or is there some kind of electromagnetic phenomenon going on in these waters that we just haven't discovered yet? Next up, we have the fact that the bottom of the Pacific Ocean is leaking which sounds terrifying, probably because it is. In April of last year, 2023, scientists discovered that a leak at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean is not spewing water, as they once assumed back in 2015, but rather it is leaking tectonic lubricant with temperatures ranging between 300 and 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The leak sits directly on top of the 600 mile long Cascadia subduction zone fault, which sits approximately 15 to 20 kilometers or 50 to 65,000 feet below sea level. So why is this absolutely terrifying? Well, scientists believe that this leak could cause one of the strongest earthquakes the US and the world has ever seen with a magnitude of 9.0, which is just 0.5 less than the largest magnitude earthquake to occur in recorded history. I don't know about you guys, but to me that sounds like a pretty good reason to get the heck out of the ocean. Next up on our list today, we have the mysterious light wheels seen in the Indian Ocean, the South China Sea, and the Persian Gulf. Also known as the Wheels of Poseidon, light wheels are a strange phenomenon in which massive blooms of light illuminate the ocean around a vessel in a circular formation that mimic the spokes of a wheel. While the light itself is pretty easily explainable, bioluminescence, living organisms that emit light through chemical reactions when the water around them becomes agitated, the shape formed by the bioluminescence is incredible incredibly perplexing. Because of this, these wheels have become known as the crop circles of the ocean and many theories including underwater electromagnetic activities and even alien influence have arisen as a result. Next up, I want to take a moment to talk about all of the wonderful, beautiful, incredibly deadly animals that are lucky enough to call the ocean home. Animals like the Portuguese man o war, the blue ringed octopus, the cone snail, the Australian box jellyfish, and the stonefish, along with so many others. If you want to die a slow and painful death, these creatures are the companions for you. The Portuguese man o war is highly toxic and it floats on the surface of the water, making it incredibly easy to come into contact with. Just brushing up against the tentacles of this thing causes intense burning sensations, pain, paresthesia, and even death. The cone snail, while tiny, is also incredibly deadly, loaded with toxins that cause damage to nerve receptors, leading to extreme pain, muscle paralysis, blurred vision, respiratory paralysis, and of course, death. Blue ring doctor. Octopus, small, poisonous, deadly. Its toxins make your muscles unable to contract, leaving your heart unable to pump blood. The Australian box jellyfish can kill you in five minutes. And of course, the stonefish, which impales you with its sharp dorsal fins before releasing an incredibly powerful toxin into your bloodstream that causes skeletal and muscle paralysis, seizures, convulsion, respiratory arrest, damage to the cardiovascular system, and of course, drumroll please, death 
exists in the ocean as well. So um, can't blame them. That's, that's some pretty scary stuff. Next up, we have the fact that the ocean contains deadly underwater lakes, aka brine pools. At the bottom of the Red Sea at a depth of around 1,770 meters, scientists discovered something strange. A brine pool, which is made up of highly concentrated seawater, roughly three to eight times saltier than the surrounding ocean. It looks like a pond sitting at the bottom of the sea floor. Super cool to look at, also super deadly to enter. You see, brine pools, believe it or not, contain a lethal amount of saline salt, which replaces the oxygen content in the water. Brine pools also contain poisonous chemicals, including hydrogen sulfide. While there are some microbes that can survive brine pools, fish, crabs, eels, and humans cannot. And brine pools aren't exclusive to the Red Sea either. The Jacuzzi of Despair is another that scientists have discovered, and this one resides in the Gulf of Mexico. It has a circumference of about 100 feet, and it reaches a depth of about 12 feet. Like other brine pools, its water is so dense it refuses to mix with its surroundings, and if you enter it, you will most likely die. Next up, we've got the radioactive waters of the Irish Sea, English Channel, and the Arctic Ocean, as well as the Kara Sea and the Barents Sea. You see, for years, radioactive waste has been improperly disposed of into some of the world's largest bodies of water. A British nuclear fuels plant is responsible for raising the radiation levels of the Irish Sea after repeatedly releasing radioactive waste into its waters. Similarly, a French nuclear reprocessing plant released copious amounts of waste into the English Channel. And if you think that's bad, for decades it has been reported that Russia has been dumping large quantities of radioactive materials into the Arctic Ocean as well as the Kara and Barents Sea. All of this has caused an increase in the radioactivity of not only seawater, but sea life as well. I really don't blame NASA for wanting to keep their lead scientists out of waters contaminated with radioactive materials known to cause fatigue, hair loss, memory loss, concentration problems, nausea, vomiting, headaches, blurry vision, and of course cancer. Next up, we have the fact that our oceans are absolutely littered with dead bodies. In the United States, alone, approximately 4,400 unidentified bodies are found in the ocean each year. And globally, that number is around 260 Thousand. And these are just the ones that we found that we were unable to identify, meaning that the actual number of bodies floating around or slowly decomposing beneath the surface of the oceans is way more than that, which is both terrifying and disgusting, and also a good reason for anyone to decide not to step foot in the ocean. Personally, there is no way I would give up snorkeling just because of a few bodies floating around in the deep ocean, but uh, if I actually saw one wash up on the shore, I might be in inclined to change my mind, so I don't blame you, NASA. Next, we've got those unidentified sounds of the ocean, specifically the Julia and the bloop. The Julia was a noise recorded on March 1st of 1999 by the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and it sounds like this. Scientists have speculated that the sound was a result of an iceberg either breaking or smashing into another. The true origin of the Julia does remain unknown. And then of course there's also the bloop, another strange sound recorded in the ocean, this time in 1997. And the bloop sounds like this. Like the Julia, scientists believe that the bloop is the sound of an iceberg, probably breaking in half, which is probable, but it's still just speculation. And considering the fact that there have been numerous other sounds recorded by scientists that have been unable to be attributed to anything, let alone icebergs, who's to say the bloop and the Julia aren't the sounds of two giant underwater monsters communicating with one another or asserting dominance to an aquatic challenger? Next up, we've got the possibility that NASA decided to step away from exploring the ocean once they realized our planet was irreversibly doomed. I mean, maybe they have bigger fish to fry than figuring out what kind of big fish reside at the bottom of the ocean. It is possible that they are actively working towards ensuring the future of humanity as we know it, whether that future takes place on Earth or on a distant planet in a faraway galaxy. For all we know, the race to find the next inhabitable planet could already be well underway, and if it is, I guarantee NASA and the United States 
states are working overtime to be the first. We all know how they like to get their flag in there first. And maybe they're doing this because of the fact that there are comets set to collide with the Earth in the next 2,000 years, or perhaps it's the fact that scientists are very well aware that eventually our home galaxy of the Milky Way will be getting swallowed up by our neighboring galaxy, the Andromeda. I don't know, I guess maybe they're looking at the big picture, pulling an Elon Musk, if you will. And then of course there is the theory that NASA is still very much exploring our oceans, but are doing their absolute best to keep things happening under the water, under the radar of the public. As I mentioned in part one of this video, many people believe that NASA has made many more discoveries than they have actually shared with us. Underwater cities and societies, gigantic megafauna, and even alien life forms are all possible reasons they might want to keep their findings a secret from the general public. That is, until they figure out their next steps. Speculations surrounding underwater facilities used to study unknown phenomena and massive underwater cages housing the world's largest sea creature, aka the Megalodon, have been circulating the internet for ages. It's possible that an aquatic Area 51 studying unidentified aquatic phenomena exists, and that one day the Pentagon will declassify those documents the way they declassify documents pertaining to peculiar happenings in our atmosphere, such as UAPs and UFOs. Only time will tell. All right, you guys, that is the video for today. If you feel like I missed anything, you know the drill. Let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to take a look. I've been your host, Hannah Thompson. I look forward to seeing you in our next video.